Hey everyone, this video is a culmination of four days of trial and error and a whole lot of searching on Google. What I have is a Toshiba L655 Delta Sierra 5050 laptop. A customer brought to me uh, to be fixed. Windows was looping and when you try and start it, safe mode didn't work, last known good config didn't work, didn't make a difference what I did. Uh, the customer hadn't made any recovery media for it because she wasn't aware that she was supposed to um, and that there was an option for that. And I'm sure that most people buying laptops are probably non-computer technical and they probably have no clue that they should be doing that as well. Before I could uh, move on to recovering the laptop, I had an issue with the BIOS. Uh, when the computer would boot, there was no BIOS splash screen. Laptop would not boot from anything but the internal SATA connection. No USB, no DVD drive. So I downloaded the latest BIOS for laptop and saw that they had an ISO. I took a spare laptop hard drive, inserted it into my dry, hard drive dock, USB hard drive dock, used an app called Universal USB Installer to burn, for lack of a better word, the ISO to the spare drive. Once I inserted the drive into the laptop and booted, it immediately went into the BIOS update program and updated my BIOS. When I rebooted, the Toshiba BIOS screen was there and I was able to enter the BIOS to set things up. Alright, so that was the first hurdle averted. Now we can move on to the recovery part of this repair, of this tutorial. There was no definitive tutorial online. I couldn't find anything and um, I thought it would be all over the internet but as it stood I had to piece together a lot of info to get this laptop fixed without having to buy recovery media from the manufacturer. So the first time I tried this I created a WinPE disk with ImageX on it to unpack uh, the SWM files which um, I will show you here. I actually was able to grab all the files off the hard drive including the user's data uh, so that's safe and then I just put it onto an, a different external drive. So here's the hard drive recovery partition from this Toshiba laptop. And in this uh, folder, ZZ Images, and then again ZZ Images, we can see we've got several files in here, uh, pre-inst.swm files, and it goes from 1 to 15. And as it turns out, when you double click on this and open it up in 7-zip you can see the whole file structure for Windows 7. So we're going to use that in just a few minutes because uh, it is necessary to have on there. Um, like I said the first time I did it I used ImageX from a WinPE disk and uh, did a certain uh, string in the command line to get everything to unpack onto the hard drive. But I actually streamlined that and didn't need to actually do that actually was able to use uh, 7-zip to do it. So what we need is if you have a new drive uh, that you're using for this you're gonna have to prep the drive. If your uh, original drive is still fine you're just having problems with Windows and you can't get back into it, no recovery media, then uh, you won't have to do the prepping but you'll want to wipe out your uh, Windows 7 partition like we're going to do here. So on this drive I actually created the exact structure that was on the original drive. A 1.5 gigabyte uh, partition that's 1536 megabytes and then what I did was to calculate how much this was going to be um, I just found out how much that uh, partition, the full partition was or yeah based on the uh, amount that we needed here for the hard drive recovery was 10 gigs so um, in actuality uh, if I go back here into the plan folder and this one here this INI uh, actually shows us the exact size that the hard drive recovery partition from the original drive is so we we're able to take the amount from this if you go to properties and we go to, oh, it's not doing it here, it's go to properties for the disk. Oh, there we go. 147,616 is what was on there. So it's going to be those two combined. That's all you have to do is find out how much the main, the, the bulk of the rest of the drive that hasn't been partitioned yet is, and just minus off 10,313 uh, megabytes. 
So with my drive here, you can see that um, I'm using a 160 gig drive as a test. Um, the first time I did this, I used a 250, and it worked. It worked well. Um, the way I did it with ImageX, um, but this partition didn't. It didn't want to boot Windows. So I had to make the hard drive recovery partition active and bootable. And when I did boot from it, it went through and it actually started up the hard drive recovery uh, process perfectly and everything went through. But this uh, video is going to be showing a streamlined version not using ImageX. So you won't have to actually go and figure out how to create a WinPE disk with ImageX on it because that will take some time and a download of a 1.7 gig file from Windows or from Microsoft I should say. So um, I've already have I already have all the the uh, files and everything laid out on here but uh, what you'll do is once everything is set and you've got it formatted properly um, we will go over to our SWM f uh, folder location you can drop that down we'll go over to my computer and it'll show that we have uh, it's not showing up properly here let's go ahead and just recycle this okay there we go so we've got nothing in Windows 7 and so those are all the um, each of the partitions, the 1.5 system. To see all these things, you'd have to actually go into Tools, Folder Options, View, and then uncheck Hide Protected Operating System Files. And that's how you'll see the uh, hidden files in, in each of the partitions. So um, we already have this. It's going to go quicker if I use it from my external drive rather, from, rather than from the um, same drive as where we're actually putting these files so I'm gonna close out this one and we can see all we have is one hidden file in here recycle bin but what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab all these and we're gonna drag them over and we're gonna use 7-zip to extract here this is gonna take a little bit because uh, we've got uh, almost 10 gigs of stuff to copy over it will go it will go quick, but um, I'll be back as soon as, um, as soon as that's finished. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, we're almost done here with unpacking these files. It won't be too much longer. And then once we are done that, uh, we will go back into uh, disk management, and we're going to make this drive active. And that will allow us to boot from it. And if everything works as it should, then um, we'll be able to boot into the into this install. So let's go ahead and bring this back up again. Okay, actually, okay, I already made this one active, but what you need to do to make it active if yours isn't is right-click on it and then go to Mark as Active. All right, so with that done, we can drop this. We don't need these files anymore. I mean, just get rid of that folder. And then what we need to do is to go ahead and eject our hard drive from our system. So this is the one here. I've got it on a USB uh, SATA dock. Uh, it's a Rosewill RX D101, if anyone's interested. It's actually a great handy little uh, device. So we'll eject that. We'll stop that, and when I return, I'll have um, the hard drive installed into the laptop, and I'll show you the next steps. All right, I'm back, and as you can see, I got the hard drive uh, set up here, ready to go. Um, you can see that the actual retention mechanism is pretty simple with this Toshiba laptop. It's two screws here and this little block goes on top on the back of the drive we go in to here and it slips in and then there's one little set screw that goes into here of course your um, particular 
laptop may be different. And then all I do is flip the laptop over, pop it open, and start it up. And if everything works as it should, we should uh, boot straight into a Windows install. So I just wanted to show you guys uh, the next step that happened here. Uh, it's going straight into the recovery, which is pretty cool. When there's uh, more stuff to show, I will pop back up again. So we can see our next significant step here is it's actually going to a sysprep uh, tool. Uh, flashed pretty quick. But um, as you can see, we're back to configuring the system again. So it went uh, through a boot after it went um, and installed the uh, office stuff. And um, it came back up again. And as you can see, that there was that sysprep uh, box there. But this is exactly what happened the first time I, I uh, did the uh, recovery the other way with the... Um, uh, Windows PE disk and the image X but uh, as you can see this is going to be a lot quicker because if you actually did Google on how to um, create the Windows PE disk it uh, it'll take some time to download the um, Windows uh, AIK which is 1.7 gigabytes <clears throat> then you have to install and then you gotta go and find a tutorial if you're not certain how to actually create the uh, PE disk. And uh, I mean, it's not difficult, it's just time consuming, that's all. So, as you can see, we're on the next step. Again, when there is more to report, I will be back. All right, everyone, I am back. And as you can see, I have made it to this screen here. So everything has been put back on. Let's see if I can get that to focus better. So I'm going to go ahead and click next on that. Uh, it shows US and English US keyboard. Okay, there's a couple screen or a couple um, licenses to uh, to accept on the next screen. And for this uh, this test, I'm just gonna say ask later for, for updates, and I'll let that choose that. Okay, so I'm gonna skip over. I'm gonna skip over this part here. Okay, I'm back. Uh, took a few minutes. wasn't too bad though. Um, now that we're back into Windows, uh, this Best Buy software installer decided to pop up. I don't really want this coming up, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to say no thanks to the software. You can always start it later if you want, but I don't want anything to do with Best Buy stuff. So that part is complete. We now have our fully working desktop. Here's Toshiba's um, pop out for camera control uh, different things you can do with that um, of course we've got if we go into um, all programs and we go straight to Toshiba my Toshiba there we see recovery media creator click yes to that and it tells us to wait And there we go. We can now create recovery media straight from our freshly recovered um, hard drive with just the hard drive partition. And the, re heart, or the um, recovery partition on the hard drive. And I have taken the liberty to create the disk already. Uh, it takes five disks to do it. Um, I've already tested them out and they work. Everything's been, everything's worked good on them. Um, so 
I really hope this uh, can get some of you guys out of a jam if, if uh, you're having issues with your laptop and uh, you have no recovery media to uh, help you out with. It appears that the recovery uh, partition is all that we really need to do that. So, um, in the near future, I'm going to actually do a tutorial on how to recover this laptop here. It's a an HP G62. It's got pretty much the same specs as this Toshiba laptop does, um, but it looks like the um, the procedure is going to be a little different. So but it shouldn't be too far off this one here so uh, stay tuned for that one and again I hope this helps you guys so uh, take care and good luck